Regarding this, but I am going to preach about overcoming depression in our lives. Overcoming depression in our lives. Depression is the common cold of our emotion. Parang si punyan. Yan yung madaling magkaroon tayo. And in, when it comes to our emotion, depression serves as a common cold. Because most of us or all of us have already experienced depression in our lives. We have become discouraged. We have become uh, uh, anxious and depressed in our lives. So eventually, depression will touch everyone, even God's people. Amen. We may be saved. We may have a comforter. We may have many, many promises from the Word of God. We may have an assurance of eternal security, but depression will come because we are still in the flesh and we are people of emotions. Amen. When you have emotion, then you are susceptible to what we call depression. Well, of course, it would be nice to think uh, if we Christians will not have dark days. That will be good. That discouragement will only come to those people around us and not to us. It would be good if people will, other people will be depressed and not me <coughs> and not you and not the people of God. But if we're going to look at the Word of God, we can see that even the giants of faith have become depressed in their lives. Amen. There is no escaping depression in our lives. If we're going to look at Job, he singled out in the Bible as a man of God. He was blameless. He was upright. He stood evil. He was perfect or matured in the sight of God. But look at the staggering losses and long painful illness that happened in his life. And out of depression, do you know what Job says? Let us look at Job chapter 7, verses 6 to 7. This is what he said. Verses that are filled with discouragement, despair, and depression. Job 7, 6 to 7. The Bible says, My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle and are spent without hope. So there was a time in the life of Job that he said, I have no more hope. I, there is nothing good for me anymore. He says, Oh, remember that my life is wind. Mine eye shall no more see good. He says, There is nothing left for me. There is nothing good that will happen in my life. I am in despair. I have no hope. I am discouraged. God had forsaken me. And there is nothing good that I will ever see in my life. And this is Job. A person that is just in the sight of God. A person that is cured evil. A person who kept his integrity in spite of all the trials that happened in his life. But there comes a time in his life where he said, I've had enough. And there is nothing good for me anymore. And this is Job. And can we say that we are better than Job? Can we say that our faith in God is greater than the faith of Job? No. So if Job experienced this, then it is not a matter of if, but a matter of when we are going to experience depression in our lives. Moses according to Numbers chapter 12, verse number 3, is the meekest man on earth. Go, Numbers chapter 12, verse number 3, please. Now the man Moses was very meek. Above all men. You see, meek and above. <laughs> very meek. Above all men, which were upon the face of the earth. So if you're looking for a humble person, there's Moses. If you're looking for the meekest man in the Bible, or who was alive during his time, it will be Moses. This Moses rises as one of the greatest examples of an ordinary man who submitted to God and became one of the greatest of all the Old Testament characters. But do you know what happened to Moses? Look at Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse number 12. Deuteronomy 1.12 He said 
how can I myself bear your cumbrance and your burden and your strife? There was a time in his life where he said to God, I cannot bear these people anymore. I cannot carry them anymore. These are stiff-necked people. These are rebellious people. These are people who have no gratitude whatsoever for everything that you have done for them in Egypt and now in the wilderness. They don't care about the manna. They don't care about the water. They don't care about the clothes that are not wearing out. They don't care about the shoes that are not wearing out. They don't care about anything but themselves. Oh God, I am wary of these people. And he was so discouraged. And he wanted to quit. And he wanted to let the people of God just go and die in the wilderness and not lead them anymore. So the meekest man in the world got depressed. One of the, the greatest Old Testament character got depressed. And should we mention David? In his effort to hide his sin, made a journal entry that speaks of the total loss of strength and the ebbing away of all that is worthwhile in his life and is groaning all the day long. Look at Psalms chapter 32, verse number 2. Kawawa naman yun. Talagang depressed na, depressed na. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputed not iniquity and in whose spirit there is no guile. Tuloy. When I kept silence, my bones wax old through my roaring all the day long. You see, there was this time of depression. And he says, he says that he, he's uh, feeling or emotions like roaring lion. He's groaning all the day. For the day and night, thy hand was heavy upon me. My moisture is turned into the drought of summer sila. Sabi niya, nanunuyo na yung aking mga balat. Dahil sa discouragement na nararanasan ko sa aking buhay. Look at verse number 5. And he said, I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgivest the iniquity of my sin. You see, David got depressed because of his own sin. Because he tried to hide his sin from God. Then he could not stay without confessing it, because his sin is ever before his eyes. And he got so depressed until the time that he gave everything into the hands of God. Jonah, the first foreign missionary, became deeply depressed when God did not destroy Nineveh. This is a different kind of depression. It is a depression because your enemies have survived what could have been something catastrophic that will happen to them. And we may shake our heads because of Jonah that he got depressed because God did not destroy Nineveh. But the truth of the matter is that even if, uh, in our experience, we are getting depressed because the people that we thought should be chastised by, by God are not being chastised. And we think about it. And we said in our hearts, Lord, it is not fair. Why is this not happening to them? And why when it comes to me, you are chastising me? But why not these people, Lord? You see, sometimes you have to be glad. When you are chastised, you are a child. And if they are not being chastised, there is a danger. That may not, they may not be the children of God. But Jonah got depressed because of this. And listen, Jonah got depressed because of a plant that got withered away. You see, sometimes our depression is because of mundane things, things that are not really relevant in our lives. But sometimes because we look at almost all the things that is happening in life, and giving a negative meaning to it, then depression is always coming our ways. Minsan wala lang ulam na depress ka. Hindi ka natiran. Hindi ka napasahan ng bola sa basketball. Libre ako, hindi niyo ako pinasahan. Ayoko na. 
Depressed ka na Amen Minsan depression natin Walang kakwenta-kwenta Walang kabuluhan But depression is coming our way Look at Jeremiah He was profoundly uh, said in the Bible As the weeping prophet Why? Because he is always discouraged That the people of God Are not listening to the word of God. And then there is Nehemiah and Ezekiel and Peter and you name it. Even these great Bible characters got depressed in their life. Why? Because we are living in this world and this world is filled with temptation. It is filled with the lust of the flesh. It is filled with the lust of the eyes. It is filled with the pride of life. And because of this, we are going to commit sin. And when sin comes in our life, then depression may set in. And that is why we are exper experiencing all of these things. So, Elijah is the classic example of a depressed person in the Bible. Because his depression is very clear and his depression is quite long. And the description of his depression is very detailed in the Word of God. That is why if there is an example that we can study so that we can learn how to get out of depression, I believe it is the life of Elijah. Amen? One of the greatest prophets who got depressed and then by the grace of God came back in a blaze of glory. Amen? Actually, the truth of the matter is that he was taken away from this world in the chariots of fire. drama kaya lang hindi nanalo. Natalo pa rin ni Gomer. Amen? So Elijah, we know, was a champion of faith chosen by God to challenge the king and the prophet and Jezebel. And you know the story, amen? I'm not going to tell the story anymore because I already told this, that story twice. We know that, that Elijah uh, was able to stand for the Lord. But I'm just going to give a comparison between 1 Kings chapter 18 and 1 Kings chapter 19. In 1 Kings chapter 18, Elijah is at the height of success. But in 1 Kings chapter 19, he is at the depths of despair. In chapter 18, he is on the mountaintop of victory. But in chapter 19, he is in the valley of defeat. In chapter 18, Elijah is elated. But in chapter 19, he was deflated. So you see the roller coaster in the life of Elijah. Happy today, sad tomorrow, victorious today, defeated tomorrow, on the mountaintop today, in the valley of depression, the next day, rich today, poor tomorrow, you name it, life is something that is not constant. The only constant in life is change. You cannot be sure that you will be the same tomorrow as you are today. You cannot be sure that you will have the same victory if you are going to face the same enemy tomorrow. Nothing is constant in life but change. Amen. And these things happen in the life of Elijah. We are experiencing a roller coaster of emotion. In 1 Kings chapter 18, it records the incredible story of Elijah in the Mount of Carmel. And chapter 19 records his depression sitting under a juniper tree. Above. And then all of a sudden, below. Over, and then all of a sudden, under. So there was this sudden change in the life of Elijah. When we saw the victory, we are so happy that people accepted God. Amen? They shouted that the, the God of Elijah, he is God. And they even killed the, uh, the prophets of Baal. And they rally behind Elijah. But then after a news from Jezebel, everything turned cold. The tables were turned. The people did not stay behind Elijah. And Elijah became depressed. And he left the scene, wanted to end his 
life. Ladies and gentlemen, listen. All of us will experience depression. We can see here that Elijah was physically exhausted. We can see here that Elijah was emotionally uh, drained. We can see that Elijah was spiritually tired. You see, the most dangerous time is during times of victories. The most dangerous time is when you are on the mountaintop. Why? Because there is no way but down when you are on top. And the most dangerous time is when you have success because that is the time that the devil will attack you so that he will arrest any momentum that you may have spiritually in serving the Lord. You see, even in our lives, if you will look at it, during the times of much happiness, then all of a sudden there will be you know, things that may happen that will you know, remove you from that emotional high and bring you to an emotional low so because of this Elijah uh, escaped and Elijah went into a cave and he traveled as I have said he wanted to end his life but you see our God is a God of comfort our God is a God of care God created us and he knew our frame. He knew that we will be discouraged. That is why God is a tender, loving God. Yes, he is terrible. He is just. But God is the God of all comfort. Amen. So, what, why was Elijah became depressed? You know, there are some reasons that we may mention why Elijah became depressed. Number one is because of fear. When you fear, you, you, you may become depressed. When you are frightened, you may become depressed. When you are threatened, you will be depressed. We experience that. We have been threatened because of, of the things that we are putting out over there in the internet. We are being, we were attacked uh, personally. We were threatened. We were cursed. All of these things. And sometimes this can, this can make you depressed. This can make you down. This can make you uh, make a decision to stop what you are doing because you will ask yourself, it's really, is it really worth it all? Do I deserve this kind of treatment when all I am doing is contending for the faith, preserving the truth, proclaiming the truth, and standing for God? Well, that happens. It happened to Peter. They were imprisoned. It happened to Paul. He was in prison. But if you're going to look at these people, while in prison, they were not discouraged. So we can also keep on keeping on without being discouraged. But sometimes these things may make us discouraged as what happened to Elijah. Elijah, many times, uh, like, like Elijah, many times we become afraid of failure. We are afraid to fail. And sometimes because of that, we guard ourselves too much that a slight failure will bring us depression. Will make us be disappointed in ourselves. Why was I able to do that when I am trying my best to guard myself so that my testimony will be preserved from people? But why did this happen? There was a slip. There was a mistake. There was a sin. And I'm disappointed. I do not know how can I go on anymore. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no life that is perfect. We need to accept that. There will be times when we are going to be down. But praise God. A just man falls seven times but rises up again. We may fall but, God, uh, but God's hand can reach us and help us stand up and help us move on until we, until we reach the finish line. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no, most of the time, a champion team in any sports will experience losses. But they did not stop. They kept on playing until they became champions. You see, there is no immaculate record in our life. There will be 
failures. There will be defeats. But ladies and gentlemen, if you will not stop, then failure will not define your life. You will only be a failure when you stop trying. But when you keep on trying, there is always the possibility of success. So we are afraid of failing. We are afraid of loneliness. Amen? Ito lalo na yun, kapag tumatanda kang dalaga at binata. Nadidepress ka. Paano na to? Tatanda ako sino mag-aalaga sa akin. Di ba nag-aalala ka? Di mo namang gagawin mo. O, paano na yun? Yung mga matatanda nga, may nag-aalaga na, nahihirapan pa. Paano ko? Sino mag-aaruga sa akin pagtanda ko? I will be alone in my life. What will happen to me? Ladies and gentlemen, if you're a Christian, can't you not realize that you will never be alone? Why? Because God is always with you. And if God is with you, He can do something. So that somebody will take care of you. Who knows? You may not even need taking care of. Because God can take you anytime to heaven without experiencing the infirmities of this life. You see, these things that make us afraid are the things that brings depression in our lives. Wala kaming anak, paano pagtanda namin? E di mag-ampong ka. Amen? Hindi ko talaga anak yun. E di may ampong ka. Turing mong anak, turing kang magulang. Ayaw namin mag-ampon. E balak sa buhay mo. Magganda na lang kayo. Gawa na lang kayo ng blood compact. Pag matandaan tayo, inam tayong lason, sabay. Hmm, yun ang gawin nyo. We are afraid of so many things in life that what we do not realize is that we are losing faith in God. And that brings depression in our life. Not only fear, as I have said, but also failure, but also fatigue. You see, when you are tired, you are easily depressed. Don't you realize that? When you are sapped with your energy, you become very irritated. You can be discouraged easily. And depression can easily come into your life. Remember, Elijah just experienced the most important day of his life. He just experienced the most important victory of his life. And after that, just one day, he experienced the lowest part of his existence. You see why? Because he was physically exhausted. Do you know how long that battle at Mount Carmel lasts? The whole day. And even after that, they have to uh, round up the prophets of Baal. And they also have to have that victory party for the Lord. So he was very exhausted. And then, when he thought that everything would be fine, and then a threat came along, and there was no more energy left in him, but the only energy so that he can escape the place and ask God to end his life. So fatigue can cause you to be depressed. And not only that, but futility. What do you mean, Pastor? When it comes to your mind that no matter what I do, nothing will happen. You see what Elijah said? I am no good. Not, 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 I am not even better than my fathers. He means to say that they did everything in order to turn uh, idolatry around, in order to destroy idolatry, in order to remove idolatry from Israel, but they failed and I came into the scene. I thought I have had it, but then I lost it. But then Israel is still in idolatry and he said, nothing will ever happen. It will make you depressed. To your life. Na, na para ba, kahit ano gawin ko, mga anak ko, mapapasama na. Depression will come. Kahit na anong gawin ko, hindi na ako makakabalik sa paglilingkod sa Panginoon. It will make you depressed. Because, 
you think that you that no matter what you do nothing good will ever come out of it it is a futile effort because you became inutile amen Tingin mo inutil ka na eh. Wala ka nang magagawa. Wala nang mangyayari sa lahat ng bagay na iyong ginagawa. So Elijah was looking through a dark colored glass in his life. Nakasanglas siya ng gabi. Kaya walang makitang liwanag si Elijah sa kanyang buhay. So I want you to see what helped Elijah climb out of the valley of depression and go on to a lifetime of useful service. You see, depression must not be the final chapter of your life. Because you can end up your life serving the Lord and receiving the commendation of God. If this helped Elijah through his experience, I believe that these principles and truths from the Word of God will also help us deal with depression. Number one, we must take time off. Take time off. The first thing that helped Elijah was to take time off. Yes, he may be escaping, but he's removing himself from the cause or the reason of his depression. You see, Elijah is fatigued. If you're fatigued, you need to rest. Amen? Amen? If you are fatigued, don't fight. Except if you are a military wearing fatigue. Amen. But if you are experiencing fatigue physically, if you are physically exhausted, then you have to slow down. You see, people are saying, it is better to, uh, what do you call that? It is better to burn than to rust. Ladies and gentlemen, it is better to rest and keep on doing what is important for God. Amen. We are not in a race. We are in a marathon. This is a long way. Serving God is lifetime. So you need to know when to get your rest so that you can recuperate and continually serve God in your life. So take time off. This is also important. He went to a place where he can be alone and he, where he can be physically and emotionally be rejuvenated so that he can keep on serving the Lord. You see, when we use up our physical energy, we become exhausted. And when we are exhausted, our emotional energy will also be depleted and we will become depressed. Fatigue and emotional uh, instability is a perfect recipe for depression. Yung pagod ka na tapos emotionally down ka pa. Ha? Depression yun. Sabayan mo pa ng gutom, ha, iikot yun. Amen? Iikot yun. Pag umiikot yan, ha, delikado ka na. Oh, kaya huwag mong pilitin. Pag pagod ka, pahinga ka. Huwag naman yung napagod kang kumain, nagpapahinga ka. Eh kadalasan yun naman. Pastor, pahinga mo na, bakit? Kayo na po po ako kumakain eh. Snacking grow. Pag ano, huwag ka magpahinga, magtrabaho ka para may spend mo energy na inilagay mo sa katawan mo. Amen. Eh, baluga, style mo eh. Ang baluga ganito eh. Ah, hindi kaya, wala kain. Oh. Pakainin mo. Ah, di pwede, busog. Oh. Papagpahingain mo, o trabaho na. Di pwede, gutom uli. Oh. Eh, na lang ang buhay nila. Paikot-ikot. But Elijah got depressed because of physical and emotional uh, exhaustion. So, in this kind of situation, we need to take time off. Look at Matthew chap Mark chapter 6, verse 31. Even the Lord Jesus Christ knows this. Even He told us to do this. Mark 6, 31. And He said unto them, Come ye yourselves apart into a desert place and rest a while. For there were many coming and going and they had no leisure so much as to eat. We often say that the Lord Jesus Christ did not waste time, but He used every minute, every day, every hour, every minute, every second of His life uh, serving mankind, 
saving mankind and all of these things. No, even Jesus says, let us rest a while. Why? Because there are a lot of things to do. And if you are exhausted, you won't be able to do it. So basketball, yung magagaling, inilalabas ba? Hindi. Inilalabas. Bakit? Kasi pagpagod na, apektado na yung shooting. Pagpagod ka na, yung, yung, yung pulso mo, iba na. Kapag kapagod ka na, yung depensa mo, apektado na. Kapag kapagod ka na, yung pagtalon mo, apektado na. Magpahinga ka sandali, paglakas mo, pasok ulit, refresh ka, magaling ka na naman. Ganun na simple. Nagtuhukay ka, hinihingal ka na, tinuloy mo. Why? Pagod ka na eh, pahinga ka sandali. Pagkatapos nun, hmm, bilis na naman, bilis na naman. Why? Kasi nare-rejuvenate ka. Bumabalik yung lakas mo. Sabi ng Panginoon, ang dahi natin ginagawa, sabi ng Panginoon, kaya magpahinga tayo sandali. And that is something that we need. Do not be a hero. You see, my pastor, because he experienced this, is always telling us, take it easy, slow down, take time off, because God has no use for a Christian who is about to die. Anong pakinabang ng Diyos sa'yo kung mamatay ka na? Sa sobrang pagod. Sobrang hirap. Nagalakim sa Bible school. Pagkabago kang kristyano, nagalak ng Bible school, mainit ka. Nakikita niya, madaling araw na, nagbabasa pa kami ng Bible. Talagang akala mo, totoo. Subsub yung aming mga ulo. Sabi niya, Pastor, ay, 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 tigilan niya, magsitulog kayo. Mamaya niya, pagka-graduate yung naka-wheelchair na kayo kanya. Yung pampakinabang ng Diyos sa inyo. O see? Amen? Kaya dapat gagamit ka rin ng isip. Kung kailangan magpahinga, kung pagod ka na, exhausted ka na, depleted ka na, magpahinga ka. Take time off. Kailangan mo yan makapag-isip, makapag-meditate, may ayos mo, ilagay may yung buhay mo sa proper perspective, may set up mo yung mga goals mo and yung priorities mo, and then, makagagawa ka uli more effectively in the Lord. Mga kapatid, naranasan ko yan, hindi po sa ako'y nagmamagaling o nagmamapuri, pero talagang nung ando ako sa Pilipinas, lalo na nung ando ako sa numbers game, sa Laguna talagang walang tigil. Madaling araw na may Bible study pa. Umagang umaga, halos di kami nakikita ng Sister Maribel, tatlong taon, hindi ko nakarga halos si Milka. Sige, Bible study. Kasi ano ang goal? Kapag ka mag-meeting kami, o oh, eto yung baptize namin one year, eto yung bisita namin, eto yung nasave. Tapos palakpakan yung mga tao. Tapos nasabihin pa, the fastest growing mission. Talagang tuwan-tuwa ka. Talagang lahat ginagawa mo para maging ano. Tapos nagtuturo pa kami sa San Pedro everyday. Nagbabiyahe kami. Abay, nagkasakit ako. Pakyaw. Alam mo yung sakit na pakyaw? Nagkaroon ako ng ano, Uh, heart enlargement. Okay lang sana kung lumalaki ang puso mo sa gawain eh. Pero heart enlargement, uh, ano yung tawag dun sa TV? May tawag dun sa TV. Primary complex. You, pati UTI. Kasi kada bisita mo, coke. Kada visitation mo, coke. Kada Bible study mo, coke. Kapag ka hindi coke, Pepsi. Walang tigil. Yung ihi ko, kulay kape na walang gatas. Tapos, nagkaroon ako ng ano, natipos ako. Ay, sa English yan? Typhoid fever. Tapos, ano yun eh? Ilang anim yata o pitong sakit. Eto pa matindi, dinala ako sa maternity clinic. <laughs> Hindi, pero sa biro, yung sa pagsanghan, maternity clinic yun eh, kaya akala, buntis din ako eh. Sabay-sabay yung sakit. Hindi ako makainom kahit isang patak ng tubig. Ayokong makarinig ng kahit anong ingay. Kahit yung naglalakad, yung yabag na ganun. Hindi ako makatulog. Nagmakawa ako sa doktor. Doktor ka ako. Injection na muna ako ng pampatulog. Hindi ako makatulog. In-injection na ako. Hindi ako nakatulog. In-injection na ako ulit. Sabi ko, Dok, bakit nangangapal yung mga labi ko? Nahirapan ako huminga na overdose ako, hindi pa rin ako nakatulog. Sa sobrang sakit! Why? 
hindi ako nagpahinga eh. Sabi niyo sa inyo, pahinga ha? Sige, ipapahinga kita. Gano'n ang katagal sa ospital mo? Tatanda mo pa? Hmm. Hmm. Gano'n ang katagal? <laughs> Ito ba matindi? Kaya minsan, hindi mo maintindihan ng ano eh. Hindi ko rin maintindihan ng ministry minsan eh. At kung paano ako nasa ministry. Ang daming tao ha? Ang daming tao. Kasi nga, walang tigil na katatrabaho. Magandang bilang ng church. Maganda offering ng church. Ano ba ninyo yung maglagabas sa ospital? Wala kang pambayad. member, di man lang nakusa <laughs> mag-contribution para makalabas ako. Tumawag pa kami ng San Pedro. Hindi rin ako mabigyan. Ilang araw pa ako sa ospital, wala na akong sakit. Dahil di kami makalabas, wala akong pera. Pero sa biyaya ng Panginoon, nakalabas pa rin. Karoon pa rin, gumawa pa rin ng paraan later on ng Panginoon. And then, pero during that time sa ospital, anda ay kong naisip na dapat nagawin ko sa buhay ko. At kahit pa paano nagkaroon ng changes after that. Kahit hindi pa rin sapat, pero may nangyari. And sometimes that is what we need. Take time off. mag ka. Kain ka ng masarap. Ako kayong mga nagtatrabaho, tinitipid nyo sarili nyo. One dollar a day ang budget nyo. Maawa kayong mga kapatid sa sarili nyo. Amen. For Diyos, for Santo. Jesus Mario. Maawa kayo sa sarili nyo. Kumakayod kayo, nagpapagal kayo, naghihirap kayo, ginugutom nyo sarili nyo. Kumain kayo ng masustansya. Kumain kayo ng pastor, sayang, anong sayang? Saan na sayang na yung ginagamit ng Diyos para mabuhay ka ay inaasikaso mo, sayang? <laughs> Hindi sayang, kapatid. Alam nyo, nung ako'y nag-aaral sa Bible School, wala kaming pera. Pero kami ni Gilbert, kahit pa paano mag-iipong kami, once a week kakain kami sa isang restaurant sa Angeles. Magti-three-wheeler ako. Sige, ipunin ko. Kakain kami ng footlong hotdog. Kung ano man. Bakit? Ini-enjoy din naman namin kahit papano ng konti yung aming buhay. Kumakain din naman kami kahit papano ng masarap. Kahit talagang tipid na tipid. May isang araw kami na one-day millionaire. May ganun. Yung bagong sweldo, lumabas kayo. Kumain kayo, wag naman sa Burger King lang. <coughs> alam nyo, kagabi, alam nyo kung sa kami kumain? Sa Amigos. Bagong sweldo eh. Ako tuwan-tuwa ako ng mga ganong araw. Kasi pag bagong sweldo, nililibre kami ni Milit Milka. Kaya pag bagong sweldo, hinahanap namin yung mga mamahaling restaurant. Kasi hindi kami magbabayad eh. Abay, pambira mga kapatid, makinig kayo ha. Inom lang ako, ha? <laughs> Ayun habang ganyan, may time pa kayo mamaya kasi yung promo, 50% discount hanggang 31, hanggang Sunday. Edi, ano yun eh? Eat all you can yun eh. $16.44, 50% discount na yun. So, ibig sabihin, 30 plus yun. Yung regular price. Pero dal promo, Pagdating doon, ang ganda ng ambulance. Ay, ano, amb- ambience. <laughs> ganda, ang ganda. Grabe, grabe ambience. Ay, grabe. Ang ganda ng ambience. Tapos, ang ganda pa ng uniform ng mga nagsaserve, ano? Talagang naka-uniform pa sila. Tapos, yung mga pagkain, kung ano, ano, may cold cuts, kuha kami, may lasagna, merong... Uh, or salad, iba-ibang cheese, may mga cake, kung ano-ano. Kuha kami. Merong uh, roast beef. Talagang kain, kain, kain. Habang kumakain ka, ang style pala, may lalapit na chef. May dala-dala siyang steak. How would you like uh, a piece of steak? Kaya nagtataka, ba't may tong? Yung pala, para pag hindi wa niya, ah, baka mong ganun. So, 
lamb steak, uh, yung steak na merong uh, cheese, may uh, Brazilian hot dog, merong uh, ito lang niyo ako, ito lang niyo ako. Ha? Uh, shri- shrimp, tapos uh, beef steak, ta- walang tikil! Kasi merong chip doon. Yung isa, green, yung kabila, red. Hanggang naka-green, walang intong dating ng pagkain sa'yo. As in, walang tigil. Puro steak kung ano-ano. Pag inired mo, at saka lang titigil. Eh, hindi inexplain explain sa amin, kaya puro naka-green. Ayaw na namin, dating pa nang dating eh. Nung talaga naramdaman ko, inired ko na. Wala na eh, hanggang dito na eh. Actually, may lumabas na nga sa tenga at ilong ko eh. At sabi ko, wala, sobrang na to. At talagang, ay, walang lahat ng steak. Nung uli, meron pang steak. Meron na naman tumating. Request mo ang gusto mo. May, yung isa yata, tao na yun. Yung steak na hayita na yun. Eh. Walang tigil, grabe. Sarap eh. Alam niyo man yun, nag-exercise ako, nagpapapayat ako. Pero meron ding araw na i-enjoy ko. Bakit na puro pahingal na lang? Hingalin naman ako sa pagkain paminsan-minsan. Amen? Aba, hinihingal ako. Napagod ako. Nang kakakain. Nag-enjoy ako. Enjoy din yung ano kinikita nyo. Punta kayo mamaya. O, oh, igagayit ko kayo. Libre nyo ako. O, oh, see? Tuturo ko sa inyo kung ano gagawin. Kung paano ang style. Sabihin nyo lang. Sasamahan ko kayo mamaya. Hindi ako magdadalawang isip. So take time off. Kailangan niyo magbakasyon, bakasyon kayo. Mag-ipong kayo, magbakasyon kayo. Kita niyo si Brother Jun no? nagpunta ng Malaysia. Oh. Di ba? Diretso ng Singapore. Ay, di ba? Tawid ng Hong Kong. Ay, di ba? O ngayon nasa Dayat. Ay, di ba? Pupunta pa sila sa Big Ace Bass. Ay, yung inyong beige. Ay, hindi ba? Pupunta. Ay, talaga ini-enjoy nila. Bakit? Kailangan nyo yun eh. Kailangan makapag-relax din kayo. Huwag puro trabaho. Ay, hindi, Pastor. Sakripisyo ang buhay ko. Sakripisyo na kasi. Nakripisyo mo pa. Mag-enjoy ka naman kahit pa paano. Amen. At this time, Elijah was there. He was alone. But God fed him. God gave him rest. God Fed, fed him. God, make him rest. God, fed him. And God, make him rest. Why? So that Elijah will be able to recuperate and he will be rejuvenated so that he can recontinue what he's doing for God. Amen? So that is what, how God treated Elijah. Nobody can run on full throttle all the time. You have to slow down. Hindi pwedeng full speed lagi. May time na mag Ako, nag exercise ako. Ang akin, walking, jogging, running. Hindi pwedeng puro running. Mapapagod ako. Pag napagod ako, ijajag ko na lang. Pag napagod ako, iwawok ko. Pag napagod pa ako, magtotok na lang kami. Ganun. Kailangan may iba-ibang variation. So dito, Pinagpahinga ng Panginoon itong si Elijah. Why? Because physical exhaustion and emotional exhaustion are closer one to another. Our body and our soul live so close together that it affects one another. Pag malungkot ka, mahina ka. Ano na pansin yun? Pag ka, mahina ka, malungkot ka. Di ba huwag may sakit sa katawan mo? Emotionally affected ka. Pag emotionally, may sakit ka. Physically, affected ka. Kaya kailangan mag-take time off ka para ma-rejuvenate, ma-refresh yung iyong body at yung iyong emotion o iyong soul. That's why being healthy is very important. Kaya papasok tayo sa ating health month. Next month. O ano ba ang program? Ako, andito ako. Jogging every day from 4 to 5. Pero wala ako. Kaya sabi nila, Amen. Buti na lang. Wala si Pastor. 
Mm. Pero may sports best. Be healthy. Yung pagkain nyo, bagamat sabi ko, kumain kayo masarap, masustansya, pero at the same time, healthy. Huwag yung magkakasakit kayo. Papasalamat ako sa Panginoon dahil sa tingin ko, wala akong pag-asa eh, dahil baptist ako eh. Ang baptist, ang bisyo niyang kain eh. Pero praise God, binigyan ako ng disiplina ng Diyos para mabantayan ko yung kinakain ko at yung aking health. Ngayon mga kapatid, from 230, 187 pounds na lang ako. Sipin mo yun, isa lang naman ng disadvantage ng bukang matanda ako. Yun lang ang disadvantage kasi medyo pumayat ako eh. Tapos pumuti yung buhok ko, pero sa exercise pumuti yung buhok mo. Oh, wala na akong tayo magpakulay. Kasi nga, nag exercise So if you are depressed, first get a good rest. If need be, physical checkup, but please take time off. Amen? Number two, pour it all to God. Pour it all to God. Second, Elijah talked through his frustrations. While he sat in a cave feeling sorry for himself, God asked him, What doest thou here, Elijah? You see, after you rest, you evaluate. You, you, is it pretend that God is asking you, why are you there? Or, as if God is asking you, why are you depressed? Why are you depressed? And then, pour it all out to God. Sabi mo lang sa Diyos. But, I need to be careful when I'm talking to God. Listen, in the time of depression, in the time of frustration, you can tell God anything and God will understand. He will understand that. Why? Because He is the one who created us. And you know, sometimes when you do not vent the things that are in your chest, you are going to feel so, it is, it is as if it's so heavy. That when you had the chance to vent it out and to shout it out loud, then you will feel a little bit light. Para bang, oh, gumaan ng pakiramdam ko nung masabi ko yun. Gumaan ng pakiramdam ko nung ma-share ko yung problema ko na yun. Let it all out to God. You see, God is fond of asking questions. Do you know why? Because God wants us to tell Him what is in our chest. What is in our mind? What is in our heart? He asked Adam, where art thou? But God knew where Adam was. But God wanted Adam to tell him what happened. So that Adam can confess to God. He asked Cain, where is thy brother Abel? God knew where Abel is. God knew that Cain killed Abel. But he asked Cain so that Cain will realize and made what he did are magnified in his sight because God is giving him a chance to repent but he did not you see he asked Moses what is in thine hand God knows that but God is telling Moses don't keep it in your hand give it to me once you give it to me then I'm going to give it back to you but not an ordinary stop not an ordinary run but a run with the power of God he asked questions because he wanted us to tell him what is in our mind. What is in our heart. So why did God ask Elijah this question? To give him the opportunity to talk, to vent his frustration, then God listen non-judgmentally. You see, sometimes when we are frustrated, all we need is a person to listen to us. A person to talk to us. It is in a sa English na a shoulder to cry on. And sometimes when we vent our frustration, then all of a sudden our problems are solved. Without the other person telling us anything. Para bang salamat at least na ilabas ko. Okay na pakiramdam ko. Amen. God wanted us to tell him. Everything. Look at Psalms chapter 77. Verses 1 to 3 and 7 to 9. This person, Asaph or Asaph, 
experience depression in life. He said, I cried unto God with my voice. Tell it aloud. Even unto God with my voice. And he gave ear unto me. Verse number two. In the day of my trouble, I sought the Lord. My soul ran in the night and ceased not. My soul refused to be comforted. You see, he, he is doing everything, but he's not being comforted. I remember God and was troubled. I complained. And my spirit was overwhelmed. And he said, I told God everything. I told God, why is it like this? Why is it like that? Look at verse 79. Will the Lord cast off for forever? He said, Lord, are you casting me off? And will uh, he be favorable no more? Lord, are you not going to help me anymore? You're not going to favor me anymore. Why is this happening to me, Lord? I'm serving you. But why are this, uh, you are allowing these people, my enemy, to do this unto me? What kind of a God are you? He's telling him in God. He's complaining to God. He's telling all of his frustrations to God. In his mercy, is his mercy clean, gone forever? Wala na bang awa ang Diyos sa akin? That this prime is failed forevermore. Yung pangako niya, walang kabuluhan. Hindi totoo. Hindi niya gagawin. Look at verse 9. He said, Had God forgotten to be gracious? Hindi na pumabiyaya ang Diyos. Galit ba siya? Kaya hindi na siya naaawa sa akin? Panginoon, galit ka ba? Ba't wala ka nang awa sa akin? He vented everything to God. He complained to God. He shouted at God. Did God condemn him? Did God chastise him? Did God told Elijah, those words should not come out of a preacher's mouth. You ought to know better. You're a prophet. No. Actually, the truth of the matter is if you will continue reading, God sent a fire and an earthquake and a, and a strong wind, but God was not in it. God spoke, spoke to Elijah in a still, small voice. He was very tender. Why? Because God knows what we are going through. And He can understand our prostrations. Kaya minsan, pag ang tao prostrated, galit, may nasabi, huwag mong dibdibin. Hindi niya gusto yung sinasabi niya. Masakit na masakit kasi yung loob niya. Gusto niya lang ilabas. Hayaan mo lang! Minsan kasi sinasabayan natin. Kaya yun, nagkakagulo. Naghahalo ang balat sa tinalupan. Di ba? Hinayaan lang. Sige. Sabi ng Diyos, magsalita ka. Kaya tinanong siya para magsalita siya. So here we can see the hopelessness. He drew a picture depicting that he was in desperation, that we, he was in a dark tunnel, but there is no light at the end, that he was in the midst of the storm, and there is no silver lining in sight, that even though he's doing everything, nothing is happening, his emotion is sabotaging whatever things that he may know about God. He was so depressed in his life that he vented everything to God. You know, when we are depressed, let us be honest with God. Let us be honest with ourselves. And let us be honest with people. Minsan depressed ka na, pakita ka pa ng matatag eh. Pakita ka pa na hindi ka nahihirapan, hindi ka nasasaktan eh. Alam naman namin na hindi ka superman eh. Wala namang pastor ng superman, wala namang diko ng superman, wala namang member ng superman eh. Madidepress at madidepress tayo. Pag depressed ka, be honest with yourself. Be honest with God and be honest with people so that people may know what to do. Amen? Nung time na ako'y nagpapanik, sinasabi ko sa inyo eh. Naalala nyo? Sabi ko, mga kapatid, kung ano masabi ko, pagpaumanin na ninyo, kasi talagang pag nagkakaroon ako ng panic attack, hindi ko alam, minsan ano sinasabi ko, napaka-exe ng pasensya ko. I have to be honest, kasi baka hindi nyo maintindihan. Baka akala nyo, nagiging napaka sama ako sa inyo. Pero wala ka minsan magagawa. Part ng buhay yun. Parang yung mga na, nag, yung mga na, sino na nagbeno po, sa ang kamay. 
may nagagawa ba kayo pag nasa menopausal period kayo? Wala! Ang init ng ulo nyo, may mga hot flashes. Hindi nyo makontrol. Wala. Part ng buhay yun eh. O ngayon, yung mga nakakaintindi ng mga nagme-menopaus, magpasensya tayo. Huwag mong patulan. Si Maribel, nung nagme-menopaus, lahat ng sakit. Sakit sa puso, sa, di- sa, sa lang, sa atay, sa bato, sakit sa ulo, sakit sa lahat. Sabi ko, isa na lang dapat mapuntaan, sa psychiatrist, may sakit sa utak. Oh, ang galit sa akin, ako kinausap. Kasi hindi pinapatulan, nakakairita, oo. Nakakairita. Biro mong, madaling araw, hindi ah, ah, ako makahinga. Ah, ah, hindi ako makahirap, nahirap ako. Oh, halika, halika. Ah, dito, halika tayo. Halika, halika. Amazing grace, how sweet the sun. Sabayin mo ako, that saber words like me. Pakanta-kanta ako ng ganun. Lalakad kami ng gabi, inaawitan ko siya. Gusto ko sana sumayaw, kaya lang eh, hindi ako masyado maroon. Lahat ginagawa ko para, para maaliw. Mawala yung isipan niya sa hindi siya makahinga. Kasi nang pagka nagme-menopause kayo, pag na-concentrate ka sa isang ano, lagi doon yung isip mo eh. O kagabi, hindi ako makatulog. Grabe. Ang lakas ng hilig ni Maribel. Sobra. Isa, isa sa pinakamatindi kagabi. Hindi ako makatulog. Puyat na puyat na ako. Hirap na hirap na ako. Ang ginawa ko habang nagihilig siya, miga ako, tinignan ko na lang siya. Tapos bigla ba sa'yo pa naman? sa pangalan ni Jesus. Is pambirang buhay ito. Ha? Gusto ko na sampalin niya. Kaya alam, pag sinampal ko, magigising magagalit sa akin. Sabi ko, hindi na ako makatulog. Puyat na puyat na ako. Pinagbas ng ko siya. Sabi niya pa, sa pangalan ni Jesus. Ine-exorcist pa ako. Na para parang ako napupuses. Sabi ko, pambirang buhay ito. Pag mamalasing ka nga naman, oo ka ako. Terrible. Depress ako kagabi! <laughs> Sabi ko, Panginoon, kailan titigil to? Pero nung maisip ko, Panginoon, huwag niyong patigilin to. Eh baka pag tumigil, humilig patay eh. So okay na hinahilig. Ayun pa naman ang problema kapag ka nahilig ang asawa mo. Pag hindi humilig, kakabahan ka agad! Uy! Ah, gumagalo pa yung tiyan. Kakabahan ka eh, hindi mo mahilig eh. Baka ka mo hindi na humihinga, baka patay na. Kaya sabi ko, sige Panginoon, titiising ko na lang. Habang may buhay. Hanggat ang dugo ko'y dumadaloy. Ikaw lang ang pakikinggan. Habang may buhay, habang may hininga, habang may hilig. Lagi pa rin akong makikinig sa iyo sa pangalan ni Jesus kanya. <laughs> Ay nako. Amen. Amen. Sa pangalan ni Jesus, ayan ang ating uh, kailangan ni Amen. So, he cried aloud to God. Malakas. Talagang yung frustration niya. Evident niya sa Panginoong Diyos. And then, he did it again and again and again. Cycle of being uh, of uncontrolled range of emotion. But he became so honest with God and when he poured his emotion, all of his emotion out to God, God listened to him. Look at Psalms chapter 34, verse number 18. Ano masabi ng Panginoon? Hindi nagagalit ang Diyos pag ganun. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and save it such as be of a contrite spirit. Yung talagang broken hearted ka talagang sumisip. Panginoon, bakit parang magkagusto sa akin? Ang Panginoon ba? Bakit ba ako? Ano, nakakadiri ba yung sura ko? Panginoon, bakit? 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 Panginoon, naintindihan ka. Kahit ako, naintindihan ko eh. Sasagip niya sa akin, anak-anak, ganun talaga. Okay lang yan. Tatanda kang dalaga. Pero huwag kang mag-alala. Nandito ako. Amen? Nandito ako. <laughs> Hindi kita iiwan ka niya. Nandito ako umiibig sa'yo. 
kahit na nagdurugo ang puso mo. Hindi tayo iwan ng Panginoon. Amen. God will always be there. So we all have such feelings at times unless we rid ourselves of them, they will cause us to be more depressed than we are. Yung kaya yung mga nagtatago ng galit sa dibdib, yan madalas depressed yung mga tao yan. Sabi mo sa Diyos. Hindi ko masabi sa tao eh. Huwag sa tao. Lalo na kung masyadong personal. Sabihin mo sa Diyos. Because our God is a personal God. Amen? You know, there are destructive emotions like fear, anger, worry, bitterness, hatred, jealousy, self-pity. These are slow killers. It can affect you physically and it can affect your health. But there are constructive or helpful feelings like love, joy, peace, and all of these things. So, if there be any virtue, let us think on these things. Amen? Do not dwell on the negative things. Look at Psalms 42 verse 9. Tignan mo, tignan mo ang attitude ng Panginoong Diyos. I will say unto God, my rock, why hast thou forgotten me? Why I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? See? Sabi, sabi ko, sabi niya sa Diyos ko. Bakit mo ko kinalimutan? Eh, hindi naman tayo kinakalimutan ng Diyos. Pero mo, inakusahan niya ang Diyos. Pero ang Diyos sa time na yun, naiintindihan niya yung emotion natin eh. Kaya hindi siya nagagalit. Pero yung wala ka na matigil ng kagano, kahit na hindi ka ano, hindi ka depressed, isisihin mo Diyos. Ibang usapan nyo, papatayin ka ng Panginoon. Ito yung time ng depression. Tinan mo si Job, dito sa chapter 6, verse number 26. Ito yung, ito yung, tinan nyo ito ha, Paki, napakaganda dito. Job chapter 6, verse 26. Pakitin nyo ha. Do ye imagine to reprove words and the speeches of one that is desperate which are as wind. Ito yung sinasabi ni Job na pinapaalam sa atin ng Diyos. May mga tao na desperado. Itong desperadong ito, magsasalita ito ng mga words of reproof. Reproof, naintindihan nyo? Masasakit na salita. Pero sabi niya, hangin lang yun. Walang laman yun. Walang meaning yun. Nasabi lang yun. Kasi nga desperado yung tao. Ganon din si Job, ganon din si Elijah, ganon itong mga men of God sa Bible na nung sina- sinabi nila sa Diyos, nakasigaw sila sa Diyos, na ituro nila ang Diyos, nasisi nila ang Diyos. Sabi ng Diyos, wala yan, pasok dito yan, labas doon. I'm not going to hold you against those words because God understands our way. You see, sometimes tears is a way of letting depression out of our system. Di ba nakikita pagkatapos mong umiyak minsan? Kumagaan yung pakiramdam mo. Pagkatapos mong umiyak, okay na, okay na. Minsan pagkatapos mong umiyak, naihiya ko pa nga eh, bakit? <laughs> ba't nasabi ko yun? Ba't nagawa ko yun? Pero sabi nga nung awit, tears are a language God understands. Amen? Sabi ng Bible, weeping may endure for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. So let it all out to God. Number three, get life back in its proper perspective. So number one, take time off. Number two, pour it out to God. Number three, get life back into the proper perspective. So the third thing that helped Elijah was to get back life in its proper perspective. He felt that God had forsaken him and that he alone remained faithful. Sabi niya, wala na. Ako na lang, Panginoon, ang natitira. But God assured him, there are still 7,000 people who have not bowed their knees to Baal. You see, when you are depressed, makinig ka sa akin, you magnify your problem. Pag depressed ka, ang tingin mo, ikaw na ang may pinakamalaking problema sa buong mundo. Ikaw na ang pinakakawawang tao sa buong sanlibutan. Yan ang nagagawa ng depression. Pero pagkatapos mo nagpahinga, pagkatapos mo nasabi na lahat sa Diyos, bumangon ka na at ilagay mo na sa tamang perspective. Ano ang gagawin mo? Isipin mo na ngayon ang kabutihan ng Diyos sa'yo. At 
Ano ba ang dahilan kung bakit ka nabuhay sa mundong ito? Kaya nga, nung tanong ng Diyos sa kanya, What doest thou here, Elijah? Hindi ba propeta ka? Meron bang propeta ang nasa kuweba? Ang lugar ba ng propeta sa wilderness? Hindi. Ang lugar ng propeta kung nasa inyong mga tao sapagkat magsasalita ka para sa Diyos patungkol sa mga tao. So, pagkatapos isipin mo, ako ba'y inilalang, iniligtas ng Diyos para madepress? Ako ba'y iniligtas ng Diyos para magmukmuk? Ako ba'y iniligtas ng Diyos para mag-iiyak at mamatay sa lugar na ito? Hindi. Meron purpose ang Panginoon sa akin. Iniligtas niya ako para paglingkaran ko siya. Kaya babangon ako. Titignan ko yung kabutihan ng Diyos. Kung iniligtas niya ako sa impyerno, ano pa kaya itong depression? Kung iniligtas niya ako sa impyerno, ano pa kaya itong kalungkutan? Kung iniligtas ako sa impyerno, ano pa kaya itong bagay na nagpapahina sa akin? Babangon ako at maglilingkot ako sapagat ang Diyos ko ay makapangirihang Diyos. Get back! And put life into proper perspective. There is more to life than being depressed. Ba't ka na? Ba't mo pipiliin maging depressed habang buhay? Ba't mo pipiliin maging malungkot habang buhay? Tandaan mo, it is all in your mind because the truth of the matter, God is a caring God. And if we are just going to put all our cares upon God, He is going to carry them for us and help us so that we can serve Him in the capacity that God wanted us to serve Him. You see here, Elijah had arrived into a wrong conclusion, so God gave him the proper perspective in number one, revealing to him that there is a new and fresh way. And what is that? He sent a cyclone. God was not there. He sent an earthquake. God was not there. He sent a fire. God was not there. But God spoke to him in a still, small voice, telling him, Elijah, I care. Listen to me. I am going to refresh you. I am going to rejuvenate you. And I am going to once again use you in the ministry because I am not yet finished with you. Ganun yun. Naintindihan ng Diyos na dadaan tayo ron. Para bang, kasi, sa Old Testament, sanay sila sa Diyos na ano eh. Parting the Red Sea. Di ba? Spectacular. Drowning all the armies of Egypt. Amazing. Di ba? Pillars of cloud and pillars of fire. Ba't talagang, pagdating sa Diyos, kailangan laging ano? Thrill. Merong, ah, uh, a bagay na kamanghamang ha. Pero sabi ni Elijah, Elijah hindi laging ganyan. At ako hindi laging diyan lang nagpapakita. Hindi ako terror lang. Makikita mo kung paano ako magmahal. Makikita mo kung paano kung umunawa. At makikita mo kung paano sa kabila ng kalagayan mong yan, gagamitin muli kita sa gawain ng Panginoon. So God spoke to him in a still small voice. You see, sometimes we may think that God is silent. He's not. He's working behind the scene. He's working all things. He's doing all things to work for our good. Because we love Him. Because we are called according to His purpose. The devil will do everything to discourage us, but don't worry. They meant it for evil but God meant it for good. Hindi tahimik. Pag, pag tahimik ang Diyos, mas lalo ka matuwa, ibig sabihin, concentrated na concentrated siya sa ginagawa niya sa'yo. Di ba minsan, pag tahimik tayo, doon tayo most passionate, doon tayo intense. And that is the same thing with God. You see, God is a God of wonders, but He is also a God of whispers. He is a God on top of the mountain where He can show you tremendous things, but He is also the God of the valley where He can be very tender with you in any situation that you may find yourself. So, God encouraged Elijah by telling him there are still so many prophets that have not bowed their knee to Baal. And in fact, God said, I already have chosen your 
replacement or the one who will succeed you in serving me. And Elisha at this time is already prepared by God. You see, sometimes, listen to this, huh? before we end, we we're almost finished. Ten more pages and then we're through. You listen to this. Elijah thought he was more important than he really was. This is our big problem. We most often than not think that we are the center of the ministry and not God. That when something happens to us, the ministry will be adversely affected. And what we do not understand is that we are not indispensable with God. We cannot be there, but it will continue. It may even prosper. So don't even think that you are indispensable. Always thank God for His grace because in spite of who we are, He chose to use us in the ministry. At ipagpasalamat natin sa Diyos. Kaya kapatid, huwag mong katamaran ang ministry mo. Kasi hindi kakarapat dapat yan. Biyaya lang ng Diyos. Biyaya lang ng Diyos. Tinatamad ka magbunta ng outreach, huwag. Tinatamad ka mag turo, huwag. Hindi kakarapat dapat, kapatid. Hindi tayo karapat dapat. Biyaya lang ng Diyos. Huwag mong katamaran ng pag-a-attend. Privilege mo yan. Maging faithful ka sa church na inilagay ka ng Diyos. Privilege mo yan. Yung iba, hindi alam ko anong gaw- paraan ang gagawin para wala sa church pag linggo. Nasa ibang lugar. Dapat nga lahat ng parang gawin mo para pag Sunday nasa church ka. At napaglilingkuran mo, Panginoon. Privilege natin yan eh. Huwag mong katamaran, katamaran magbasa ng Word of God. Love letter sa atin ng Diyos ito. Biro mo, kakatamaran mo. Kaya anong klaseng kristyano ka, walang alam. Pagdating sa salita, eto pa naman ang matindi. Ang mga akala mo kung sino yung mga walang alam. Bakit? Kasi pag may alam ka, alam mo ba na ang natural, supposedly ha, ang natural tendency ng may alam, maging humble. Kasi nakakaintindi ka eh. Yeah, pero kaya yung mga nagsasabing may alam na mayabang, walang alam yun. Dahil pag nalaman mo ang word of God, malalaman mo una, humility. Na wala kang may pag... Hindi naman sa ating galing itong kaalaman na ito eh. Alam ba ninyo na lahat ng alam ko kung walang Bible, hindi ko alam? At kung ano man ang alam nyo kung wala Bible, hindi nyo alam? Kaya huwag natin katamaran ito. These are all privileges from God. Amen? So keep life in perspective. God will use you for His glory. And that is the reason why God saved you. So it is not that God designed for you to be depressed all of your life, though you may come to that part, but God's design is for you to stand up and to become stronger than you are because of your experience with God during your time of depression. Lastly, get back in the mainstream. Serve God again. Elijah got back into the mainstream of life and went to work again. So God allowed Elijah to sit in the dark cave and self-pity for just so long. Not too long, but just enough so that he can refresh him and tell him to stand up and get back to what I called you to do. And he went out and do exploit for the Lord and he was even able to see and bless his successor and that is the prophet Elisha. So that is why we should not remain in the cave but we should stand up and we need to keep on keeping on for God. Listen, despair need not be the doxology of your life. It may be the invocation, but don't let it be the invocation of your life. May those dark days make us tender enough to keep focusing on God. You see, Elijah began with a huge problem and a small God. But he ended up with 
small problems and a big God. And if God is big, then there is no problem that God cannot solve. He stood up and he went back to the mainstream and he was able to do exploit for the Lord. And you know what happened? He was taken up in a blaze of glory. There was a chariot of fire from God. It came down from heaven to earth. And Elijah rode the chariot of fire into the arms of God. Amen? Now it's your turn. Do what Elijah did. If ever you will pass through this dark valley of depression. It is common to life. All of us will pass through that. But don't stay there. Keep on walking until you reach the light wherein God can once again use you for the glory of His name. Amen? So I hope and I pray na ito po ay 